Good afternoon, Egunon. It's a very difficult task, closing, and I'm standing in between you, the time and the lunch. <laughs> so that's why I have to be brief, and at the same time, there is something I need to also cover. First of all, I am deeply impressed. I am very happy to be here. Four reasons behind it. I think you will agree with me. It is a beautiful place. Mountain, sea, nature, beauty, and others. Some places has that one. It has a beautiful institute, Technica. They only, not only talk, they showcase what exactly vet school need to do. Third, a very committed leadership, starting from the ministers, directors, coming to the unit in the classroom. I saw everywhere leadership matters. And finally, the great people. What a music to start, what a dance to close. That's the culture, that's the great people. Where heritage mixed with skill, then you will get excellence. Without culture, it cannot be. That's why I will say my salute to all teachers of Technica, those who are here. Salute to the teachers of the VET in the Basque region. You have done a great job. With this comment, definitely I will request you, all the teachers, to share whatever is possible to the rest of the world. What is bus today is not the world. World is very diverse, uneven development, at the same time, numerous challenges. Also, many things, new experiments are going on on the vet also. So that's why what we need to have a bigger picture, one size will not fit all. Context matters and matters most, and where we have to understand the context very deeply. But there are some universal truth which has been done, and that one I will try to touch, how Industry 4.0 can work for sustainable development goal, which is only one mandate throughout the world, irrespective of the country size or economic position. We need to have a, a very good, peaceful, prosperous world to build up together. But can Industry 4.0 really help to that? That will be my talk. Last two days, we have discussed so much about, actually, we have a clear picture now. There is no need to repeat all this thing, that world is changing, and changing very fast. But how we will cope up with that change? And is this change is only digital? In our understanding, there are three major reasons of changes happening. One, digitization. Second, climatic change. Third, huge migration that is happening. These three are giving a big push, affecting the TVET. But here, we are only discussing that is digitization issue, which is Industry 4.0. So what I will try to touch, how this digitization journey will help to fulfill the dream. And what is the process? It's not sufficient to know that we have to do, but how to do? How Fiji, how Papua New Guinea, how a remote country in Africa, when I travel from one place to another, you need to understand the world is very, very complex. And in this world, we need to be all innovative in all sense. And then only we can reach out what we really want to do. And I like to give some of the examples where we need to think about the change. And it can start in Africa, it can be in Asia, it can be in Latin America, it can be in Arab region. I know a lot of changes are happening there. The world is changing. So much example you have seen. The way we work, the way we live, the way we play, the way we learn, 
the way we socialize. The first thing after checking, you have always asked to the people, is that an internet connection? 10 years before or 20 years before, that is not the situation. So we have changed. We, silently, we are all changing. People have said that mobile cannot be an instrument to see the video. Latest statistics is showing that people are all doing in mobile. So things are changing very fast, which you have all know. Three things are important, I think, for this changing world. First, adaptability. Second, react. Third, anticipate. How wet system can do these three things? Is there any magic pill with us? Or there is a process to say that how to adopt, how to react, and how to anticipate. We have seen some of the examples in Technica, the way you are working. I like to take some of the examples from Technica and others, from the Univox centers, those who are working a little bit on that, what experience they are talking about. Not only world in general changing, workplace is changing. There are three mega trends. First, moving from divergent technology to convergent technology. You all know that still there is a country in the world where they offer civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, you go there, this is there the courses. You go to a developed country, you will see mechatronics, nanotechnology, uh, biotechnology, uh, information and communication technology. What is this? These are all convergent technology. It's not monodiscipline. When we talk about mechatronics, it's no more mechanical, it is electronics. It is computer science, information system, all integrated. And if you observe very carefully in Technica, that challenge they have overcome in an innovative model which will will come to that. So it's from divergent to convergent technology. Next is from petro base to bio and renewable energy base. Petro will go out in phase out manners and we are going to a new energy solutions and that will be another journey that we have. I'm not talking about solar, geothermal, not only that. There are many other biotechnology research going on where energy source will be in agriculture, not the so-called the way we have thought earlier. The third one, it is third industrial revolution to fourth industrial revolution. Many of the friends here ask me, you know, Okay, we also, this automation, everything was there in 80. At that time, we didn't say AI or fourth industrial revolution. What is the difference when we talk about automation in 80s and 90s? It is nothing new. Robot is also nothing new. What is new? That is changing. I think we have to make a deep dive here. What is the deep dive we have to do? If you look very carefully, you have first driver of the change happen, steam was the engine. Next, when the change happened, electricity was the engine. When the third one happened, robot already arrived, automation was there. Then tell me now, what is the difference between that automation and today's automation we are talking about, Industry 4.0? This Industry 4.0, is we have to know is a cyber physical system. Means virtual world and real world is coming closing together. And it is interconnected, sensor based, internet of things, cloud computing, 3D printing, nanotechnology, whatever we are talking about. It's still not 100% we are sure how we will define that. But we know that these are not the same. Even while driverless car or I am in an office, I know what is the position in the refrigerator, whether milk is there or not. These are all happening. Okay, like, a, oh, fabulous, how it happened. So it's an all cloud, interconnected. There is a brighter side, there is a danger side. Brighter side, if you know how to use it for mankind, and the darker side, 
already you have seen what happened in the Facebook. We don't know how far it will go. We need to understand the privacy law and others. That's why Europe has come up with this agreement and others which we may need to share. So it's actually a plethora of technology. Cybersecurity, augmented reality, the bio, this uh, big data, autonomous AI, all we have talked about. Now, one thing I like to hear, the term industry 4.0, sometimes to me, is a misnomer. Misnomer, it didn't connect with, the, with remote country in Africa or a country in a very remote place. They will say, why it is only industry? And truly speaking, industry 4.0 and industrial revolution is not the same. It is valid in industry, it is in service sector, it is in all sector, it is all pervasive. That's why this picture attracts me much more. In fish farming, in a remote places, how this technology being used, it is an example from Norway Univox centers. Additive manufacturing, you have seen in Technica, how it is working there. Hospital and healthcare, this is much more important to me, to reach out the disabled, to reach out what is impossible earlier. Never, we thought, we call it a, this was not an inclusive society. There are a lot of exclusion happening. This is helping now. And the fourth one in hotel, hospitality, and others. So it is a wide range of application that can be unexplored. What is our duty as a teacher and a student? We have to know the magic of the technology, but ultimately, we want to live in a peaceful world, a happy world, a prosperous world, a world where we are all together. That's why when you teach your student, don't say only, do you know this AI, this technique, and others? If they don't have the values, if they don't have the ethics, if they have greater vision, I think we will create another division rather than inclusions. So that's why we need to know that the application is from service sector to any, and that's application we need to work out. That's why we have this mandate now, 17 goals, what the world has decided. Yes, this is a very ambitious, some people say, how come you, United Nations, all country minister has taken this decision? By 2030, we have no poverty, no hunger, good health, quality education. Fantastic. If you ask me frankly, will it be possible by 2030 to reach this goal? To me, apparently impossible. But if you don't set the bar high, you will never reach that one. And that's the reason when I talk to the president of the country sometime, they say that's the reason we have set it up. But implementation target will be decided by the country. And I know the country will say that it is all valid for developed country from USA, Germany, Finland, to a small island country, those who are working very hard, all bound by that. So now, here, if you look carefully, all this goal, skill, is the heart. Without skill, you cannot achieve good education. Without skill, you cannot have a good health. You take one by one. It will be in the center, and we are in a lucky. Skill is the top agenda of all the countries. And people have realized this will be the major bottleneck if we don't really enhance that. So 17 goals, if you dissect it very carefully, innovation, promoting innovation using technology that you are doing. When I see that whole innovations are going on for healthcare to service sector to agriculture and others, that is happening. Clean energy, again, a lot of experiments are going on Equity, like the main target of all this thing is to remove the 3D job, difficult, dirty, and dangerous job. 
we are lucky here. Have a, such a wonderful way we work. If you look skills, actually, in many countries, they have to force to do the difficult job. Very dangerous job when they go mining or sanitation in a big city. I have seen in my own eyes. This is really, really a different world to gathers. So if technology can help there, but what we need to be careful, please do not encourage jobless growth. We want growth, but not only jobless. If it is taking out the purpose, is only taking out the job, then I will say phase out in a manner one by one. You cannot stop that because technology will come, technology will be inevitable. But you have to plan in such a way that it really goes with the track, the way we want to shape the world. Education and health, poverty and hunger, everywhere you will see economic growth without decent work and innovation is not possible. My question will be all our bright side of this. But how to reduce this new digital divide? Even some of the developed countries have seen, they are not yet equipped when we say like very advanced AI machine learning algorithm teaching. We need to be very, very careful that we should not create a new divide, rather we will make inclusive and there is a potential to do that. Just simple to get your heads up. Globally, there are 758 million adults, including 115 million youth, still lack the basic skill needed to enjoy the benefits of digitization of the society. There is a one developer and one user. We need to do something on that. How can technology sol solution will be inclusive and accessible? This also we need to reach out. Don't think of from the development side only. Think about user side. This technology is a mass technology. When a smartphone is being used to call a Uber car or Google Map being used to track where the people are going, these are being used by you. This is being used by a illiterate, never gone to school, a rickshaw puller in India in a remote place. So that's, you have to understand, it's becoming a level player now. And there we need to think that to train, to literate them is also one of the responsibility coming to us. Then, what are the changes we are thinking? One changes will be the way we work and live, already we say. Likely disappearance of employment on lower skill. Lower skill jobs might be disappear. And more empowerment to equitable growth will happen. And there will be process competencies and maximizing the human well-being will happen. You know, these are in general term, the development and employment. And what are the challenges are coming? First, I've already said to avoid jobless growth. We should be conscious. We have to make a conscious move. We pay the penalty when we only see one side of the story, not the other side of the story. Second, we avoid digital divide. So we need to see inclusion in the society itself. Third, gender disparity. It has to be very clearly. STEM is the only by which we can really encourage this digital, uh, this gender divide can be thing. We have to facilitate value-based education, ethical use. This will be central point we have to come in. And lastly, we have to utilize it, implement for sustainable development goal. Up to this point, what we have to do, I have said. But how to do that? My friends from Africa is here. From Seychelles, they came. They will ask me, what is the implication of all this thing to my country? How I can apply that? If we don't share that feeling, then we have really finished our job half. There is a need for center of excellence among the innovations, those who are going on. 
but always look the bigger pictures. If the social inclusion is not taken into consideration, the world is not broadening. Technology-wise broadening, but actually it is shrinking. Look at the problem of the whole world. In many countries, we cannot travel freely. Look at the suffering the people are in country after country is happening. They are also people, they are also human beings, whatever may be the reason. So if we don't take that inclusion perspective in a bigger way, it might be. So that's why this new world will require new approaches and new curriculum. That is my first take. Why? The common characteristics of all this technological change is interdisciplinary. I already illustrated that. All the technologies are oriented to research and development. All these technologies are very information intensive. All this technology is very shorter cycle. So then we need to prepare a system which must be agile. From the learner point of view, from the system point of view. How we can do that? Mere technical skill is not enough to survive in this workplace. You need mix of skill. Three things. Foundation skill, transversal skill, and specialized skill. When we start earlier in the vet school, I have observed, they only teach this specialized skill. Now they need to know, because technology is changing, you cannot spoon fed the learner with one single technology. I am a computer professor. 20 years ago, when I was teaching in a, like a vet school, teacher's training college, I was teaching 8085 architectures. When I step out from my classroom, then I heard Intel already came with 8086, then 8087, 80186, 80286, 80386, 80486, Pentium 1, and then Massive. I was teaching architecture of microprocessor. Tell me now. This is a real. I'm teaching something, but while I'm teaching that subject, the subject become obsolete. So instead of this way, if I teach them like generic architecture, like object-oriented technology or architecture of the processor, then it will be done. So that will come from which part? That is the transversal skill. Learning to learn and adaptability skill. This is called adaptability. Adaptability has two aspects. One adaptability is called, generally I am adaptable. You put me in any situation, I'm, this is one aspect of adaptability. In technology, you are adaptable means what? You have a foundation knowledge which gives you the confidence that even if in the interview, they will ask you, do you know the language called Kava, which is very good? Then the student will reply like this, I know object-oriented language. Kava is object-oriented language. Give me just three months, I will see the manuals and do it. And today I see the student from one university to another university, they are competent on that only. That's called learning to learn and adaptability skill. It's called transversal skill. Then, science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths will come in. Now the question is, being a teacher, I know, it is easy to say, okay, you have to have a foundation skill, you have to have a transversal skill, you have to have a specialized skill. What is the working hour for a curriculum? 40 hours per week, you have to complete all this thing. Then they will tell to the management, it's impossible to cover all this thing. So only this content is not sufficient. You, know, you have to know how to deliver them. Technica has shown the process. What Technica has shown the process is challenge-based education. Some country has said idea-based education, and also I have seen in some country call it innovation-based education. Instead of discipline-wise subject, you started with the, the topic, and whatever subject is needed, you are taking the knowledge. It is easy to say, I'm telling you, 
when you'll start implementing, you will find it very tough job. And truly speaking, I like to see one day a more focused discussion on this with the Technica teachers that how they really do that magic. I gone a little bit detail and I have seen that this is called team teaching and learner centered with teacher co-learner approach that has making the magic. So that's the philosophy I think we need to adopt that it's not only the curriculum, the way the curriculum will be delivered will give a, this kind of you know, competency which we are looking, which is adaptable and agile, the system we are talking. So that's why you have seen this is the way of they are working here in different developed country. You have a virtual reality, you have a, this uh, you know, uh, automation, mechatronics, all hands-on but high, high you know, fundamentals to be cleared. So that's why this world requires a new quality process. What is that process? We started quality process from product base. Make the product very nice. Then people came. Just looking at the product will not solve the problem. If you improve the process, product will be automatically good. Then Japan has told us quality circle, small group, total manage quality management from America, we got it. It's people based. Okay, if people. Now, it is the age of innovation based. If innovation is the driver, then we need to see what methods are, what governance, what institution are doing that. For that angle, I have, this is the last slide, the way forward, which I say to how we can achieve that in the worldwide. First thing I, I will su suggest is breaking the silos. The breaking the silos means we cannot work in isolation. Let's start with just Technica example. What Technica did, industry, community, all SMEs, they are all in touch. It's called local skill ecosystem. You, we are all, whatever may be our country, you are in some community or locality. Look at that. See who are the partners, who is doing what and break all the silo. This we know, but we do not have the model. What is the model? There is a research organization. There is other actors, those who are working, that need to be also included. So that's why I will say breaking the silos is the key point we have to do. This silo is from vertical silo and also horizontal silo. We have to break it down. Second, Breaking the barrier. This discussion of early childhood, basic education, upper secondary education, technical vocational education, higher education, there are different div divisions. Who has made all this division? We all people. But look at the learner. Learner is the same. You've gone through all the process. Now SDG is telling us Lifelong learning is the path. That was a world when people go to school, being trained, got a job, life is easy. 40 years you are doing the same job. Now it is a world, every four years magical technologies are coming and you need to come in, upskilling, reskilling, all these are happening. So school to work, work to school, work to school, school to work. This is a jig-jack path, and that is only possible when we will break down the barrier. And we have to so-called barrier between higher education and TVET is meaningless because nanotechnology technician is no far inferior to nano engineer. We are making hairline, hairline divisions here mechatronics and we can take. Only we can say one is academic orientation, another is applied orientation. So that's why there are vocational universities coming worldwide. 
I, I can name it one by one who has taken this vocational university in China, in Sri Lanka, in uh, others, Japan, and different countries are coming up. So there are new type of institution is evolving. We have to accept that. The third one, inspiring innovation. We need to inspire innovation. Means today when you will go back, I know you will all discuss what you have seen in your own school in Africa and others. If Technica can make it happen, we can also make it happen. That should be our spirit. But we have to do this inspiration of the innovation. That's why center of excellence, which has been proposed in European Commission, we have already on that journey from the UNESCO, UNIVOC. We are making innovation hub with the same concept. What we will do, I will sincerely will discuss uh, very closely with you and see that we can make a real this effort. And this is a beauty will be like this. In Europe, you are some institute very advanced in this stage. Then you have to handhold a partner in Africa or Asia, those who are potentially going to that direction, so that your, this journey will have a, not only one-way traffic, but two-way traffic, and we will get a new inspiration on that. And thirdly, reducing inequality. And the last one, sticking to the four pillars of learning. Very, very important in UNESCO. Learning to know, learning by doing, learning to be, learning to live together. Learning to know, you know, without knowing it will not happen. Learning by doing, by skill, that is okay. But why we are learning? What we want to? This is not only a labor market issue. That's why ethical and values are important and learning to live together. If your society is in pain, if your community is in pain, you cannot serve education, and world problem is deep-rooted because we didn't understand it deeply. If education is the key for development, skill is the master key to, to alleviate poverty alleviation and inequality. I wish to finish my slides with this quotation. People see things happening, ask why. I dream of things and ask, why not? I think we should start from here. Thank you very much.